Hey guys, are you wondering what pan pastels are and how to use them? Well in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I created this landscape step by step. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. The surface that I'm working on is Claire Fontaine pastel mat which is kind of like a sanded paper with a very fine tooth. You can buy it in a variety of colours as well as white. It also comes in pads or you can get large single sheets as well. And the large single sheets are great because you can cut them down to the size that you like and you can also choose to have it mounted onto more of a rigid surface which is quite nice to work on and also looks a little nicer if you're working on commissions or if you're selling your artwork. And I use this type of paper for pastels or sanded paper in general for pastels in comparison to other pastel papers which can be really quite smooth because this type of paper lets me add numerous layers which is how I prefer to work. Pan pastels are basically a soft pastel compressed into these pans, kind of like a pressed powder foundation or a blush. And you can buy them in single pans in small sets or you can buy the full set of 80 pans. They can screw onto each other to stack up for storage or you can screw lids onto them separately as well. And there are roughly 20 base colours and I'm using my own terminology for this. It's probably not how pan pastels themselves would describe them but I find it easier to think about it this way. Anyway, there are roughly 20 base colours and then there is one tint, one shade and one extra dark shade of each base colour. This means that when you're first starting out, you could actually purchase the 20 base colours, a black and a white, and then mix your own shades and tints. And that's a great way to go if you can't afford the entire set or if you're just trying them out to see if you actually like them. You can also mix colours together very easily as well and I have a tutorial explaining how to do this which I'll link below in the description but you can basically get a 5 or 10 set of pans and still be able to make, mix pretty much every colour that you want. And I'll leave a link to all the supplies that I'm using in the description below just in case you want to check them out. When working with pan pastels you'll need to use tools to apply them. I use these soft tools, S-O-F-F-T, which are like sponges that come in all different shapes and sizes and these are the most common tools that people use with pan pastels. They pick up the pastel from the pan really well and then they lay down the pastel really well on your surface as well. And you can also use brushes or other tools to create different effects if you like. I've started by transferring my outline onto my surface with transfer paper, but you could use a pastel pencil if you like as well. And I don't usually do an entire piece just with pan pastels alone. I usually start by adding a thin layer of pan pastels as a base layer, and then I'll go on top with soft pastel sticks or pastel pencils, or I'll use it to get a nice soft or out of focus background. I wanted to do this piece to show that you can create an entire piece with pan pastels alone. It obviously won't be as detailed as using pastel pencils because it's a bit harder to get the same amount of detail that a pencil can give, but it can still look realistic if you want it to and it's really great for more expressive pieces. Pan pastels can be a very cost effective alternative to using soft pastel sticks. Yes, they're quite expensive to purchase separately or as a set, but you don't waste any pastel in these pans and they last a really long time. Pan pastels can be an inexpensive way of getting started with pastels because you don't actually need a full set. You can buy a set of 5 or 10 pans and mix pretty much any colour that you like, just like painting with oils or acrylics. It's very hard to create new colours if you're working with soft pastel sticks or pastel pencils because they aren't as easy to mix. People tend to buy huge sets of pastel sticks or pencils for this reason. Even with the full set of pans, sometimes I don't have the exact colour that I need, so I mix my colours quite a bit, and there's a few ways you can do that. One way is to mix your colours straight onto the pastel mat by layering colours on top of each other. So when you apply the pastel with the soft tool, you can use the tool to blend the new colour and the colour on your paper together. So the more layers of pastel you add, the smoother your blending will be. Another way to mix colours is by picking up colour from one pan and then go straight into another pan so you have two colours on top of each other on your tool and then apply it to your paper that way. It will come off the tool not completely mixed together but you can smooth out the mix on your paper with your tool if you want to. The downside to both of these ways of mixing colours is that it may not be completely accurate because you aren't quite sure how much of each colour you chose and what that ratio will look like until you put it on your paper. So the other way to mix colours is to do it on a separate piece of paper. This way you can get a completely smooth colour blend and you know exactly what colour you're going to be putting onto your artwork. 
And I'll actually do a little bit of this kind of mixing a bit further along in the piece. So you'll notice that I've got a piece of printer paper just resting on top of my artwork and I'm mixing colours on that paper. And then I'm lifting up that colour from the paper and using that onto my artwork. Using printer paper to mix the colours on is a good paper to use because it doesn't stick well to a slick surface like printer paper. So that means it's easier to lift off that pastel once you've mixed it there. If you buy the traditional soft pastel sticks, it can be very hard to get a colour that you're after if you don't physically have that colour in a stick. This is why you see pastel artists with huge collections of different pastels, usually within different brands as well. Different brands of soft pastel sticks have different qualities, especially their vibrancy and their softness. So people tend to have a very large collection because of these reasons, which can get very pricey. And with these pan pastels, you get the best of all those qualities, even if you buy a set of 5 or 10, so it's a pretty cost effective way of getting started. Pan pastel is an easy way to work in layers because you can control how much pastel you're laying down. This means that you can choose not to fill up the tooth of your paper quickly and to leave some of that tooth showing so you can add more layers of pastel or pastel pencil on top. Whereas if you use the traditional sticks, it could be very hard to control how much pastel comes off the stick onto your paper. And because of how soft the sticks can be, usually quite a lot comes off and it fills up the tooth within one or two layers. If you wanted to have your pan pastels create that same effect, where you fill up the tooth and create that vibrancy, you can easily just add more pastel onto your paper. But you also have the benefit of adding a very thin layer if you want to. When working with the soft tools, keep in mind that the smaller sponges that slide onto the blue sticks tend to wear away quite a lot faster than the bigger sponges. This is especially true if you're working on sanded paper like I do. This is probably the one complaint I have about working with pan pastels, that I have to keep buying new tools because they wear down so quickly. But you can avoid this by pressing very lightly with the tool so that your sanded paper isn't sanding away your tool as quickly. Also make sure to keep adding more pastel to your sponge when it starts running out instead of trying to press harder to get more pastel to come off your sponge. And you can actually squash the bigger sponges into different shapes between your fingers to create smaller edges and then work in the smaller spaces with those as well and that can definitely save you some money in the long run. Using bigger sponges in bigger areas will obviously save you a lot of time as well. It's a lot quicker than trying to use a tiny little sponge to fill in a big area. When you do your first layer or two of pastels on this surface, you can see a lot of the paper coming through and it looks translucent and not very smooth. And this would be the perfect time to start adding details in pastel pencils on top because it means that there's still a lot of the tooth of the paper left for your pencils to grip onto. When I'm talking about the tooth of the paper, I'm talking about the texture on the paper. It's kind of like it has hills and valleys. So when you add pastel to it, it catches on the top of the hills and the more pastel that you add, the more it will start sinking into the valleys and eventually you'll end up with a smooth surface. This is the reason that you can add numerous layers to your piece, but you have to keep in mind that pastel can fill up the tooth of the paper really quickly. And it will stop you being able to add more layers on top because there's no heels left for the pencil or the pastel to grip onto. It will sort of just slide over the top. So hopefully that makes sense. That's how I like to think of the tooth of the paper anyway. If you find that you've put too much pastel down and you want to add more layers, you can actually remove some of the pastel from your artwork by using a stiff brush to brush away some of the excess pastel. Or you can use a putty eraser or a kneadable eraser and press that onto the paper and lift it off. And this can be a bit more precise than using the brush and a little bit less messy. But the good thing about pan pastels is that it lets you add a lot of thin layers. So you can gradually build up the layers and avoid adding too much pastel too quickly, which can be a big problem with traditional soft pastels. With your soft tools, if you find them getting a little bit dirty, you can actually wipe off the excess pastel onto paper towel or a cloth, and that will help clean them off pretty well, even in, in between different colours. You can also clean them in some warm soapy water if they're getting really dirty. Just make sure that you rinse off the soap thoroughly and let them dry completely before you use them again. The tools do stain quite easily, but it's just a stain and the colour doesn't come off once you've washed it properly. If your pan pastels start to get a bit muddy and you've got bits of colour in the pans that's not supposed to be there, you can just get a tissue or a cloth and then wipe over the surface of the pan lightly to remove the excess unwanted colour and it will be just be good as new. 
Pan pastels are a great way to add some interesting textures to your piece. I find that using traditional pastel sticks to create texture, like laying the pastel on its side, makes it kind of look grainy and I don't really like that look. Whereas pan pastels can almost look like soft brush strokes depending on how you use your tools. And you can get so many different kinds of strokes if you switch to different sponges or different sizes of sponges. I've created a playlist on the screen which has more pastel tutorials where I'm combining these pans with pastel pencils, so head on over and check it out.